freaking hot with this sun right here. Anyway, I gotta let my uh, car run. Charging my battery. I've been charging my phone off it. I haven't really gone anywhere, so I don't wanna kill my battery. But uh, I wanna talk about Bitcoin. I know we got a lot of noise and the sun's blasting and traffic's right in front of me. I wanna talk about the history of Bitcoin, I guess. Do I really need to keep my shit going right now? Uh, hold on. Fuck, we're just riding, bro. Look, I wanna talk about the history of Bitcoin. I wanna talk about, from my, my understanding, where it came from, why it started, how it came up, what it's doing now, so on and so forth. From my understanding, there's two reasons Bitcoin might have came up. The first one, as what I thought when it first came up, uh, is to be like a solution to the incompetently managed monetary system we have here in the United States and other countries with fractional reserve banking, inflation, so on and so forth. And uh, Bitcoin, you know, seemed to be a uh, you know, this, this blockchain technology where there can only be so much money, so many coins, so on and so forth. And, and so it'd be a limited thing and there couldn't be inflation. And thus, really, I guess you could say like with the with, with a growing user base and a limited amount of coins, you know, the value of it would go up. So it'd be appreciating instead of depreciating with, you know, uh, an increasing supply. Um, and that's how money's supposed to be. I mean, like people, well, I, I mean, I, I don't know who can even say that. That's how money's supposed to be. But like we talk about gold, gold back in the day seems to be the gold standard <laughs> of money, pun very intended there. Um, and, you know, it, it, it worked because it was fungible. You break it down in small increments, and there, there was a limited amount of it for the most part. And you know, you can you could you could break little increments down and use it for trade. So, so gold worked pretty well, right? Um, because it had that limited amount and it was fungible like that. And that's basically what Bitcoin was kind of, uh, you know, being created to, to mimic, I think, you know, to, to be a limited, to have a limited supply that will ever be mined. And that's why they even call it mining. It's like mining gold. Um, and, and to break it down to very small increments, like all the way down to like Shatoshis, I think that's what they call them. And uh, so, so that's the original, like that, that's to, to me what I first thought that Bitcoin could have been created for, why it was created, why Shitoshi, you know, invented it in the first place, whoever Shitoshi is. But uh, I think there is a, a second possibility. I'm not saying this is exactly what it is, but I'm thinking it could have been maybe anonymously created to hide who really created it. And there could have been certain people that created it to introduce the blockchain technology, which I think eventually will give rise to all types of, uh, I guess, just record keeping, but maybe to some degree uh, a more digitally tracked, uh, maybe like surveillance system of sorts in the world maybe so maybe you know there's certain players in this world that said you know here we're gonna like do this bitcoin thing and make it look like it's it's this organic thing we're gonna hide you know who who created it whatever but like low-key it's it's it could have been somebody i mean i don't know who but that's just another speculative uh possibility it's just something to keep in mind that's a possibility that's what i think I mean, that's like not what I'm 100% convinced of. I'm just saying, like, I think it's just good to have that as a, a possibility that's open, that you're open to, you know, whatever. Um, so I learned about Bitcoin. I think I can turn off this engine now, right? So I learned about Bitcoin back in, like, I learned about it early on because, really, I think it was, like, 2009. It's a long story. I watched this. Uh, it was actually an Alex Jones documentary called The Obama Deception. And I watched the whole thing. They're talking about a whole lot of stuff. I'm like, damn, I didn't even know who Alex Jones was. I was like, what the hell is this dude talking about? And then there's one point where he goes up in front of a Federal Reserve building, one of the Federal Reserve banks, like the local or, you know, one of them branch banks or whatever. 
And he has a megaphone. He's sitting there. He's like, ah, oh, we the, we know that you're a privately owned bank, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hold up. This dude, like, he, he's talking about the Federal Reserve is a privately owned bank. And I was like, this dude, that, that can't be real. And, like, I'm watching the whole movie, and there's all this stuff Alex Jones is talking about. And, like, this deep, scary voice. Like, you know, scary, you know. Like, he's, oh, he's talking in a certain voice. But, uh... So I Googled that shit. I said, let me let me check that one. That's something you can verify real quick, you know, see if this dude's full of shit or not. Sure enough, I look it up. And the freaking Federal Reserve, they call it a quasi-public, quasi-private uh, corporation. It's made up of member banks like Bank of America, Chase Bank, so on and so forth. And I was like, what the? F-? That blew my mind. That was back in like 2009, right after Obama became president. And so that blew my mind. I was like, whoa, this world this world is not what I thought it was. And I'm like, you know, I'm just like tripping over that. I'm like, these people are printing money. They have unlimited money. What can't they buy? What can't they do with unlimited money, basically, is what I was thinking. You know, there's a little, I mean, there's, there's nuances with how that works with the government and issuing bonds and open market. What do they call it? Open market. I forget what they call it, but basically, you know, the the Fed can print money and buy bonds and so on and so forth. There's stuff like that that goes on. So it's not just like directly Fed's printing money and just has money and can spend it how it wants. But uh, the government kind of um, can do that. $28 trillion in debt right now. That's the government, though, who can do that. And then banks with fractions are banking create um, money on the spot, like literally like local banks, like. I think there's a bank down here somewhere. I don't know what it's called, but it doesn't matter. Local banks, fractional reserve bank, and they create money on spot credit, and uh, which is supposed to eventually be paid back. But really, the whole monetary system is this perpetual loan. You know, it's just more money that constantly comes in and gets paid back. And then there's interest accruing on top of the the the, the entire monetary uh, system. You know that that's supposed to be paid back, but you know uh, it's impossible to pay back because the only money that exists is the borrowed money and there is not any money to pay the interest with you know unless you borrow more money and pay the interest then it's just more another loan has to be paid back with more interest it's just perpetual debt that's what the whole monetary system is and that's not just in america that's in the world so anyway i learned that and i'm like whoa bro like this whole monetary system screwed and really i've been on kind of a uh i don't know what you want to call it like uh I'm just like that. That's messed up, and so really, like, some inside me said that that shouldn't be like that, and that has to be fixed. So I've been on kind of like a thing where I'm like, man, we gotta like do something about this. Basically, like, this is what has to be fixed in the world, and I feel like it'll fix a lot of things in the world. So I've been, I've talked about it a lot, and I don't want to call it a tirade, but maybe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've been on that for a while. So anyway. I learned about that like 2009, right after, like not long after, like I'm telling you, like within the same year, probably a couple months, I learned about Bitcoin. I was like, oh, Bitcoin. Awesome. Like, like, cause like I said, this was like seated in, in my heart, you know, telling me like that's messed up with the way this monetary system runs, so on and so forth. So I'm looking for answers. I'm looking for whatever. So sure enough, yeah, I come around to Bitcoin. I'm like, oh, Bitcoin. And I see it and I see what they're doing. I'm like, like, obviously to me, I'm like, that's the solution for this messed up fractional reserve banking bullshit. And I actually downloaded a freaking uh, client on my computer to try to like help with the mining and stuff. I just wanted to help. And really, I had no understanding of investing whatsoever. I did not even comprehend what investing was. I was a total moron as far as I was concerned. I was literally, I downloaded the client just so I could help the network. That was literally like my intent right there. And I wish I kind of knew what what investing was. I wish I would have understood because really what that is, if I did that early on, uh, because I believed in Bitcoin, I wanted Bitcoin to succeed. I'm like, heck yes, like this is like the solution for people to have a good type of money that's not, you know, being manipulated, being printed like crazy or just clicked and made up on computers, even though Bitcoin's mind is it's different with the blockchain it's a limited amount. You know, there's no inflation with it. And I'm like, this is good. This is sound money. I used to listen to Ron Paul. I actually listen. It's funny. This is ironic. I used to listen to Peter Schiff a lot because he was always talking about the Fed being crap. And now he's like this total like anti Bitcoin person. And I think a lot of like this new generation don't know that he used to be like anti Fed. And that's like primarily how he was no he called the housing bubble and 
all types of stuff. And he was talking about the Fed, you know, interest rates, stuff like that. But now he's like just, you know, he's gold. But I think that's really because he's mainly invested in gold and he wants that to, you know, go up. I think he's, you know, he's trying to cheerlead his own investment. So he's kind of like anti-Bitcoin, pro-gold. I want there to be a free market of money. I'll just throw that out there right now. But anyway, listen to Ron Paul a lot. He talked about the Fed, Peter Schiff. Um, and I was like, heck yeah, I want this to, to succeed. Bitcoin, I want Bitcoin to succeed. And so I was all about it. But what I realized now is that had I invested in it like that, if I got that client on my computer, really went hard with the mining and then like collected that, and I, and I would have hopefully understood the uh, growth potential, you know, wanting it to succeed and everything. What I could have done and what it would have been if I had done that would have been basically buying a money supply early on before it's widely adopted at a low value, a low valuation, and then holding on to it basically till it's adopted and used as money to then, you know, be able to spend and, and I guess be rewarded for my early adoption of that type of money. Now, that's really what it is. It's basically buying a money supply. And and I, I mean, Bitcoin's still not really used as money, but it kind of is a little bit. So it's like, it's called Bitcoin. It's, it's supposed to be money. Like, that's the whole point of it. So I, I'd say it is, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's not really money right now. It's just an asset. It's like, well, you know, there, there's a lot of infrastructure being built. Like, literally... Uh, credit card companies now are like trying to like get it to accept bitcoin you know um stuff like that uh so it's looking like money to me but anyway um so that's what it would have been had i invested you know had i collected bitcoin back then but i really just had no sense of it whatsoever i had no idea what investing was i didn't even think of that possibility that potentiality i didn't think okay well here, I can get a whole bunch of this right now, and later on, it'll go up. I was really rooting for it, though. I was like, heck, yes, we need, like, good money. But I didn't, it, like, didn't even cross my mind just because I was so, like, obsessed with just having good money. I'm like, dude, no, we can't have this crap, cr uh, I was about to say, I don't know, like, crappy uh, fractional reserve banking stuff. Um, And we need good money. And, and so I was like, yeah, Bitcoin, yes. And I literally downloaded a client so I could help mine that stuff. But anyway... So Bitcoin is one type of cryptocurrency. There's been a lot that have come out since. There's Litecoin, there's Ether. Ether's a really cool one. There's a lot of other ones, right? I really, 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 truly, and I understand this like fundamentally how important it is to have uh, options as far as types of money that the economy can use to facilitate to facilitate trade. Um, because if, if, if there's a money monopoly, if there's just one type of money and that gets fucked around, it'll fuck up the function of the whole economy. If there's multiple types of money that are already up and running that people are using, if one gets fucked around, people can just, you know, rely more heavily on the ones that are already up and running that are still working. And, and I explained it. Uh, I mean, one way I can explain it is, let's say, like, you know, we have multiple car companies. Like, if there's one company that just for whatever reason, you know, either stops manufacturing cars or they start manufacturing crappy cars, it's not going to stop people from driving. It's not going to, like, halt everybody's, you know, like, you know, functionality because there's other car companies that they can go to. If you, I mean, if one car company goes down, there's a free market, there's redundancy <laughs> in the market, there's options where if one goes down, you can go to another one. You can get a car just fine. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. We need that with money. Because as it stands right now, there is a, you know, there's there's generally money monopolies in, in any given country or geographical region. And uh, with that, you know, if, if an entire economy or market, whatever, relies on just one type of money, it's, and it gets fucked around, it's gonna fuck up the entire function of that economy. And, uh, and you see that a lot, but not only that, I have to explain this. Um, if these people can literally just print money and everybody's using it and are willing to accept it in trade for their labor, their goods and services, their work, their, their sweat and tears, if people are just able to print that money, create it on the spot and just bring it to the market and buy literally your labor, your time, your labor, whatever, then you're basically a slave to them. You're basically like, they're just literally creating money and going to the market and buying your, your labor and 
they're doing nothing, you are serving them for nothing. So you're a slave. And so if people, if there's a money monopoly, then it basically leaves the door open. Or let's say if there's a money monopoly with a type of money that can be created on the spot that people can create and bring to the market and just, you know, buy stuff with, it leaves the door wide open for, you know, I guess that type of exploitation. I mean, it, it leaves the door wide open for, uh, people to basically be ripped off for their own uh, labor, you know what I mean? And uh, that that's that's an, a major liability, that's a major red flag, no, no, no. And, and that's, I guess, along the same lines of what it was whenever I saw, you know, whenever I first saw what fractional reserve banking was. And, but really, it's just really what I saw with fractional reserve banking that was the worst to me was the, the business cycle, the inflation and deflation, which just affects the flow of the economy of trade and affects supply chains and it'll just it can cause depressions and stuff and no 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 you know um i've heard some accounts of basically you know things being like artificially crashed so then like rich people can then buy them at like like low valuations and then money being pumped back into the economy so valuations go way up and they sell at a very high point and then they you know they get rich off of that and if you're manipulating the interest rates you know the money supply is going up and down and up and down. There's going to be this, this, uh, I guess what you could call it, like the business cycle and, and rich people can take advantage of that. And they've been doing it and that's how they've been consolidating wealth. And that's what I really saw when I first understood what fractional reserve banking was. Um, more so though, um, that I see now is like literally just like money creation is literally and, and bringing that to the market. That's literally like you're a slave, dude. Like they're literally just buying your time, labor, energy, whatever. And, uh, and that's what, the, I mean, really, if you look at the government, the government, like I said, they basically have unlimited money. Like they can literally, they basically have a credit line, basically have a credit line on the taxpayers tab. And, but they're running it up like crazy. Is that 28 trillion right now? They don't seem like they're going to stop anytime soon. Uh, you know, it's really with bonds, they issue bonds and then they have, and then they borrow and then, I don't know, the Federal Reserve buys some bonds, banks buy bonds, people buy bonds, other countries buy bonds. Um, but then they have to pay out, uh, whatever the maturity on those bonds are. And again, it's like, it's like this perpetual debt thing. Like they're constantly to, to borrow money. They have to issue more bonds, which have, you know, which they have to pay back later. And it's just perpetual. Um, and then they expect the taxpayer to pay, you know, I guess the interest on all that borrowed money. That's what they expect. But what they're really doing in reality, and if you just look at it, you can see this. This is what I'm trying to get with all this. They're literally just creating money like out the wazoo, running up the debt like crazy, buying stuff from the market. They literally will, not only are they buying stuff from the market, they will literally give money to like other countries, to their buddies politicians will you know get like campaign donations from certain corporations and then they'll do favors for these corporations when they get into office they'll like offer them government contracts that are like uh like that are going to hand them like 10 or 20 times more money than they really should be handing them you know the government will buy things from certain corporations for like 10 or 20 times the price of what they should and so these politicians are doing favors for their buddies and whatever so this money is being borrowed on the taxpayer's tab. The taxpayer is supposed to pay it back eventually. And these politicians are just handing it to everybody. Like, they don't even care. Um, and then those people, including the government, though, itself, the government will literally do the same thing. They will go to the market and buy whatever. they would, Like, the money's just created, and it goes through the government. It's created on the taxpayer's tab. The taxpayer is supposed to pay it back, but then the government just, the, the politicians just hand it to whoever, and they will hand crazy amounts um, to let's let's just put it this way. Like, let's say they they uh, a politician, you know, gets their their buddy over at like, uh, I don't know, some corporation, you know, gives them a big old contract. They will pay them, like I said, 10 or 20 times more than they should. And then that company can then go to the market and buy either i mean a whole lot of resourcing i mean human labor to produce whatever it is the government wants so that would be the government benefiting from that money just being created or two they're going to spend a little bit of it produce what the government wants keep a lot of it for themselves and then personally they can go to the market 
and then buy whatever they want, which could be like a yacht or, you know, a mansion or something. So, you know, things that are just, you know, I don't know, just extra, you know, these luxuries or whatever. And so these people will seem to enrich themselves through money creation one way or another. And, uh, and, um, it's, it's to me, I look at it, that's like, that's basically slavery. It's like the same thing, you know, same thing. Anyway, um, my point that I want to make with all this is that the government seems to be, and I know I'm sounding like I'm sidetracking and stuff, but hopefully people are following. The point I want to make with this is that the government is basically running up that tab that on the, you know, the, the, the credit line on the taxpayer's tab and spending money like crazy, handing it to their buddies, whatever. And then they're buying stuff from the market. And, but really, I don't think they have any plans of stopping. I don't think they have any plans of it really being paid back. What I think they're doing is just running it up like indefinitely until literally the money's going to be worthless. They're, they're literally creating the money, going to the market, buying resource over and over again until the money's just inflated so high that it's worthless. And then they're going to say, oh, well, and then they're going to say, OK, well, let's make a new type of money and try to do it again. And that's what I call like 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 a monetary life cycle of sorts. You know what I mean? Or maybe just the, the money cycle. Well, these people will literally create money, bring it to the market, buy resource, and inflate it to oblivion until it's totally worthless. And and just say, oh, well. And then they'll just create another money and try to do it again. And they're the whole time, they're literally just siphoning resource. And, you know, they're not doing anything to produce that money. They're literally just creating it, boom, going to the market, running it up to oblivion, uh, well, buying resource and, and running... I mean, they just keep printing it, you know what I mean? And, and, and the supply goes up crazy and uh, and its value just goes down to nothing. And it's literally monetary sabotage. And that's what I think the government has planned. I think they're just doing it. And at, like they are literally funding, like I said, the politicians handing money to their buddies, uh, whatever the government wants. Like Like literally, like in America, like there's wars that are funded. They will literally go to the market uh you know they will create markets by demanding like like whatever the government wants to spend money on they're creating a market for it like the government wants weapons to go to war they'll literally create a an arms manufacturing you know market you know what i mean and they and then if they want soldiers they'll freaking create a market for soldiers to be hired and it's like all of that resource is going you know when the, when the government's just creating that money the people and i don't know the politicians the people in government are creating that money and then, you know, deciding what to spend it on. They're creating markets that are literally detracting uh, from from other uh, what would otherwise be good, you know, economic function. You know, they're, they're literally like siphoning resource for whatever it is that they want, you know, by creating money and then spending it on those things. They're creating markets for those things. So 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 the people that are soldiers or arms manufacturers you know, uh, instead of maybe like helping their own communities or being doctors or something positive like that, they're literally funding war because the government literally creates that money and then decides what they want to spend it on like war. And so it's literally like siphoning resource from the economy for whatever it is that they want. And it's just like, dude, like that is literal like slavery right there, you know? Um, I'm getting pretty far away from Bitcoin, <laughs> but it, but this is relevant stuff. This is relevant stuff. Um, so you see how that is a problem. Uh, that's an exploit. That's that. I mean, that's what happens when there's a monetary monopoly. When there's one type of money that people use, that uh, that it, you know, that you know, people, somebody has the ability to kind of exploit like that. I guess you know, like the government can can create that money like crazy and, and and so it's an exploit and it allows them to go to the market to to siphon off resource and put it toward whatever they want including their own luxurious over over indulgent lavish lifestyles you know what i mean um and that's what they've been doing and they, they're basically like leeches to the economy they're literally like like just like i said siphoning resource that's basically what they're doing and uh it's messed up it's really messed up and uh, so the fix to that is to have a free market of money. 
have multiple compute uh, multiple options of money up and running and then basically if people see that there's options they'll see which ones are good for saving because they're not being inflated like crazy so on and so forth they see that they don't have exploits like what exists right now with a lot of these monies they'll say okay like what are we even using that for and they'll literally just just let it die in atrophy and in neglect you know what i mean just let it die just just abandon it basically and, and all of the the user base of those crappy monies that have those exploits so on and so forth will migrate to the ones that are actually good and i mean that's how it should be a free market of money it's just like if a car company created a crap car and there's other options that are way better it's like of course we're going to use a way better options we're not going to keep buying crap cars like it's stupid it's just capitalism call it capitalism free market uh supply and demand functions you know um it's pretty simple stuff. Um, so, so, so as far as Bitcoin, I guess the things that I wanted to address were first the, the why I think it started, but two, it's like you know people that invested have basically bought the money supply. Why that's relevant here? Bitcoin seems to have the what they call whales, which are basically uh, people that bought a lot of that supply, maybe have cornered the market of Bitcoin, and. Uh, and so there's only so much of a, of a supply available if people actually want to start using it as money. And so if they've already cornered the market on it, if and when people start to use it as money, uh, its value will likely go up because there's a, a, you know, an artificially short supply due to the people basically cornering the market and holding on to it. Um, and then if that small supply gets adopted and is used as money, the value of that will go way up. And then the people that have cornered the market can then kind of do the same thing as people that you know, create money on the spot and go to the market and buy your labor, so on and so forth. You know, they just cornered the market on that type of money early on, way but like, you know, way before it was valued what it maybe will be in the future. And uh, so so really they, they only had to pay so much to, to buy that supply. It gets adopted uh, and, and only a small portion of it's available to actually use as money. The value will go way up, and then those whales that cornered the supply, even if it didn't cost them a lot early on, they can then like trickle little pieces in and literally buy resource from the economy, just like people that could create money uh, do right now. You know what I mean? And basically siphoning resource to, and it could be for whatever they want. Again, it could be for their own luxurious lifestyles, you know, overindulgent lifestyles, whatever. Or it could be for other purposes the same way. Like the government likes to direct resource toward war. It's literally, I mean, that's why the money's so important. You know what I mean? Because the money directs resource. And uh, people have to understand this. That's literally how the economy works. The money, what's, the, what's that old saying? Cash rules everything around me. It's like the money directs resource, including you as human resource, your labor. You know what I mean? It literally directs the functionality of mankind you know the economic industrial functionality it literally directs that and uh if people don't understand money there's going to be this exploit of just creating money and then just directing resource as they want like without any questions asked if you do understand it you see where the exploits are and you say okay that's bad money that's an exploit don't let it happen so on and so forth so bitcoin right now yeah they got these whales they've cornered the market i would say on the supply same with gold though the, the value of gold went way down and i feel like the the uh supply has been cornered on gold so even if people start to use gold as money i think it's already been cornered and it'll be the same thing a small percentage available value goes way up when people actually actually start to use it as money and then those whales if you want to call them that they can you know then same thing like uh, siphon resource to whatever they want by you know introducing you know trading small pieces of that money supply for whatever whatever resource it is that they want and so that's what you have to understand. Money directs resource. And you have to understand the changing values of money with, with the user base. When the user base is small, the money's cheap. You can corner the market on it if you do that. And then it gets adopted and only a small percentage is available as a supply and demand function. Low supply, high demand, increasing demand. The value of it will go way up. And then the people that corner the market on that then have, you know, a huge, you know, they, they control like half of the money supply and then you know they can buy whatever they want they can direct all the resource that they want um just just depending on the ratio how much of that money supply they have versus how much people are using 
well, I mean, what the value is at any given time, but they can direct a lot of resources and by cornering the market on those money supplies. And that, that, that matters. You know, some people are going to say, oh, well, I want to be one of those people and be an investor, so on and so forth. But that's not what's good for the economy. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you could, I guess, do that, whatever. But I guess this is for generally the world, you know, the, for people to understand. There, there should be a free market of money and people have to understand these dynamics to, you know, be able to see which money's good and which one's not. Which one has these exploits which ones and which ones don't, you know what I mean? To be able to choose which ones they should really adopt, uh, you know, as money. You know, really, like Bitcoin right now, it's, its value has been going up and... Um, or even gold, even the dollar, you know, if there's alternatives, if, if some good, better, uh, some good type of money comes up or some better type of money comes up than, than what currently exists and people migrate from what they're using right now to those things, the value of, you know, these other things that aren't so good that people just literally, you know, abandon it's going to go to zero. It's going to be worthless. Those, those are worthless things. That's literally how technology works a lot in the world. You know, when some new technology comes out, the old stuff obsolete, gets abandoned and the user base migrates. It's the same thing with money. Um, so, yeah, if there's crap money and people it's cornered or this or that, people just migrate to something else that's better, you know. And that's what people have to do. I mean, that's like a, really that's kind of what they have to do or they're going to keep getting exploited. I mean, this is something people need to understand this monetary exploit. And uh so, yeah, I highly condone a free market of money, highly condone people to understand these exploits. Um, I like Bitcoin, but like I said, there's these whales right now that have seen to, seem to have already cornered the market on it. Um, but, yeah, I definitely want to see a free market of money. I want to see a lot of different types of money. There's a lot of different types of cryptocurrencies, but I want to see a lot of them up and running and being used as money. So I think that's really a, a solution for the world to keep everything functioning properly. Like I said, with, with uh, monetary monopolies, there's changing interest rates, uh, increasing, you know, fluctuating supply, which just just messes with the, the money's value and supply chains and everything. It just messes up the flow of business. And, uh, you know, with good money and, and redundancy, you know, meaning having, you know, that there's like multiple types of money up and running. If one of them is messed with, you already got other ones up and running and, and business can continue as usual. You know, people just just rely heavier on the ones that are good up and running already. And hopefully more and more people come out with more and more good types of money that can help facilitate trade in the economy to keep the whole, you know, machine running. You know what I mean? So that's what it's all about, dude. And uh, I don't know. I mean, Bitcoin is relevant in this whole like transition. I feel like Bitcoin, I say, I would say, is like the first major, like maybe like homegrown type of money. And there's all these other like there's other cryptocurrencies where we know who created them. You know what I mean? And uh, so I, I think that's good, man. Uh, the, uh, that what I see emerging with cryptocurrency in general is a free market of money. If the the real money functionality comes up, and but really all it has to be is a is an a, a a user-based adoption and like i said man uh bitcoin seems like it's already been cornered the market's been cornered but it's the same thing like maybe people it, it is a good investment early on to get in while the value is low before it gets adopted as money it's, it's a great investment i'm not gonna lie probably one of the greatest you can make um but again it depends as time progresses there could be new technology comes out and the, and the user base will migrate and that's the same thing with other technology that's that's literally like a concept in, in investing if uh, you know, if you wanted to know, <laughs> um, you know, new technology comes out, makes old technology to, uh, obsolete and the user base migrates, user base migrates, you know, there's the disruptors and then the disrupted, you know, and uh, user base migration and uh, the values change accordingly. Um, so that being said, man, that's just a, a little bit of an under insight, you know what I mean? And that's really what I think I see happening right now is, is an emerging market of money, a, a free, a free market of money. I don't know, an emerging market of different types of money that people can use, like I said, for redundancy to keep the economy running. And that is good for trade. And it really, we can get rid of the freaking leeches in our economy. The, those that are trying to like exploit it. Like I said, you know, we, we have to be aware of those exploits because they literally, 
they're they they they're literally directing resources to, to themselves for their own luxurious lifestyles, but also to to less than positive things. They're directing resource towards stuff that's really I would say is bad, like war, you know, like stuff like that. They're literally directing the fu- directing the functionality of the human you know economic machine you know toward whatever they want to just by controlling the money that's a major exploit that some people need to see and that's what's so important here that's why we need a free market of money anyway i'm gonna leave it at that i guess i don't have much else to say i think you know i don't know um that's good stuff though it's good stuff um hope you guys understand um this important stuff you know what like i said i see this free market this this new market of different types of money emerging and uh the more people understand the dynamics of it the better choices they can make as to what types to use where to migrate as a user base so on and so forth and uh definitely want to keep your eye out for these type of exploits because those are literally like leeches to the economy and if we can get rid of those those parasites to the economy boy the whole world is gonna be functioning better the whole economy is gonna be so much more healthier you know what i mean and uh and, and that's a a very good thing so That being said, uh, hope you guys understand, and I'll talk to y'all later. I'm out. Uh, Like and subscribe. Watch all my other stuff. I've I've been talking about this stuff for years, kind of, and I don't know when people are going to catch on, man. I just keep making content, making content. So eventually, like, it's just, keep putting out the same ideas, man. I'm on Twitter. I tweet everybody. I'm tweeting under, like, you know, famous people. I'm trying to put these ideas out, man, because it's important. It's important for people to understand this type of stuff. So they can make good decisions as to, like I said, where to migrate as a user base, uh, for instance, and uh, to look out for exploits, so on and so forth. So you got to be smart. Be smart. Um, Be very smart. See what's going on. Don't get played. You know what I mean? Uh, Be smart. Be very smart. I'm going to leave it at that. I'll talk to you later. I'm out.